Some weeks ago, I bought Gran Turismo 7 and a PSVR 2. My childhood is deeply marked with memories from all games from Gran Turismo franchise, all of which introduced me to my sim racing career and I have absolutely no idea I was gonna do that for a living 20 years later. After spending many years driving competitively in a set of course and finally I racing, I decided to go back to my roots and see how the game is doing nowadays. On the very first day, I was already quite emotional about all the soundtrack, menu sounds, interface, the career mode, the racing licenses, the missions. Everything came back and it hit hard. Such a lovely, gorgeous game still maintains its soul, its style, and I'm sure it will keep building good memories for millions of people as long as it exists. But as a professional sim racing coach and real-life racing driver, my obsession is now different. Racing technique. Is it possible to build a good racing technique in Gran Turismo that would be even transferable to real life or other simulators? The short answer is yes, but it's not that simple. After around 40 hours of driving, testing setups, doing the single career mode and a few online races, here are my first impressions of Gran Turismo 7 and how it compares to my experience in iRacing and in real life driving. One of the first things that bothered me in Gran Turismo was the input lag and low frame rate when driving with a monitor. 60Hz is just not enough for sim racing. You need at least 120Hz and the lowest input lag possible so you can quickly communicate with the car and drive more accurately. Driving with too much input lag makes absolutely every car feel as if it has a much softer and lazier suspension, even formula cars, and corrections are much more difficult to do swiftly. But hey, two weeks after I got the game, a big update was released and 120Hz is now possible in Gran Turismo 7. You can right away notice that the video quality of the game is a little bit lower for the game to be able to run smoothly in 120Hz and it's totally worth it. The input lag is almost gone too. That is definitely one less thing to worry about. Make sure you activate the 120Hz option and that you have a monitor that supports that, of course. I have a 165Hz monitor, so that was not a problem for me. Regarding the difference between monitor and VR, I'm making an entire video about it, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that video when it's out. Now, before you start asking, which is the best simulator? Let me clarify one thing here. Not all tires behave the same in real life. You will have tire compounds that don't like sliding too much, that would overheat very easily and lose grip. But you can also find tires that require some sort of overdriving to get them to the temperatures they need for maximum grip. Some compounds will benefit more from abusing the steering wheel and not trail braking too much, while other compounds will require little steering input and lots of trail braking. So there's no right or wrong right away. As a sim racing coach, my advice is understand what the tires want and adapt to them. Do this in absolutely any simulator, racing game or real life race car and you will do well. If you're the one who complains too much about the car balance, competitors that focus on adapting to whatever the car wants and needs will beat you easily. With that in mind, my main goal while testing Gran Turismo 7 is challenging my own driving technique and coaching skills. I want to be able to drive whatever has four wheels. I would need some months to fully adapt to the physics of Gran Turismo 7 and become competitive, but after 40 hours of driving, I can already describe more or less the main structure of the physics model. Coming from iRacing, one of the most developed racing simulation services in terms of car physics, I was immediately attentive to the behavior of the cars in Gran Turismo. The first thing that I noticed is that there is not a lot of room for neutral steer, that middle point where the car is a little bit over theory and under theory at the same time, sliding just a little bit through the racetrack. I noticed that it is much easier to transition quickly from under steer to over steer, which we call under steer snap over steer, where the driver tries to minimize the under steer first, generates more rotation and ends up going over to the other side of the car handling problem. In Gran Turismo 7, it feels like the slip angle range is a little bit too narrow, where the car is not sliding, not sliding, but suddenly it's already sliding too much. The cars in Gran Turismo tend to understeer a lot, especially on the entry. If you try to fight that too much, you can easily snap and spin under braking. In iRacing, as a comparison, you can dance with the brake release several times in a single corner on entry phase, where the car oversteers a tiny bit, but then you release the brakes a little bit more quickly to shift some weight to the rear tires and correct that balance. 
all that on the first half of the corner. In Gran Turismo, it feels like if you lose a little bit the grip, you already lose a lot of time. This actually requires more precision with the reference points in Gran Turismo, like braking points or turn-in points in some places, whereas in iRacing, you can get away with a little bit more corrections without losing too much time. As a matter of fact, I mostly don't use turn-in points at all in iRacing, only braking points, then I'm already focusing at the apex. In real life, I found myself having more room for pedal corrections to affect the balance of the car, just like iRacing. The extra precision you develop in Gran Turismo is a good thing though, it forces you to be sharper with your inputs and timing. And if you switch to iRacing in the future, you can quickly learn the extra weight transfer tools to have a much wider room for driving at the limits. Trail braking is still very much necessary in Gran Turismo, although I see it varies a lot from car to car. In iRacing, it's all about trail braking and balancing the longitudinal grip with the lateral grip. In Gran Turismo, that is still the same thing, except that you will still be feeling some understeer while doing that. Turning progressively and smoothly on turn-in while braking is also a must in both platforms. The number one rule for steering speed and all my students know that because I don't stop haunting them with this, is that if you're trail braking, you turn in slowly. And if you're not trail braking, like going into a fast corner where you don't need to brake, or changing directions while on throttle, you can steer more quickly. The rate of trail braking appears to be more forgiving in Gran Turismo thanks to the understeer behavior and aggressive ABS settings. Using ABS in Gran Turismo 7 is faster and you can rely more on it, whereas in iRacing you want to minimize its use, although you should still have it on in cars that have it available. In iRacing, cars that naturally don't have ABS don't allow you to use ABS in them, so you will definitely have to learn a much more precise trail braking with these cars. So in telemetry, you'll probably find that precision in the brake release trace will affect lap times a lot more in iRacing than it does in Gran Turismo 7. In other words, Gran Turismo benefits a lot more from line precision, and iRacing also requires a good brake release precision. Before the big 1.31 Gran Turismo 7 update, I felt the force feedback in Gran Turismo was a bit dead. Lazy. For reference, I'm using a Logitech G Pro direct drive wheel with 11 Nm, which is very good. In Gran Turismo 7, you would start understeering and abusing the fronts and the wheel would still provide the same resistance as if you were using the fronts optimally. In iRacing, when trail braking and steering perfectly, you can feel the force feedback getting a little bit heavier. Basically, the force feedback will get heavier when you're on the right slip angle and peak grip levels in the fronts. In Gran Turismo 7 though, I could not really know when the car was understeering because the force feedback response was a little bit similar in both situations, abusing the fronts or not abusing the fronts. After this last update though, I can clearly feel when I'm abusing the front tires as the force feedback gets a little bit lighter when you go over the optimal amount of steering at a given moment in the corner. This changed the game for me. In real life and iRacing, that heavier feel is mostly what I look for to make sure I'm properly using the front tires. And then I manage the rear tires balanced through the paddles using weight transfer. I guess I'm lucky to get Gran Turismo right at this update. You will still see very smooth entry steering inputs in Gran Turismo because of the understeery tendency, while in iRacing you will see many more micro corrections with the steering as the car slides into the corner. The force feedback in iRacing is incredibly precise regarding car balance on the entry and I found this to be also true in real life, both in karting and in the Subaru BRZ race car that I raced in 2022. Make sure you have your force feedback properly set before judging games and simulators, by the way. I've had enough students complaining about a simulator where the problem was with their own settings and once fixed, it changed the game for them. Here's where most people would probably say that iRacing is a serious simulator with better racing and more respect between drivers. But let's reflect a little bit on that. Gran Turismo is a game. It's widely accessible to various players of all ages. So of course there will be a bigger chance of finding drivers who don't care too much about sportsmanship, just because they were not introduced to racing etiquette yet. iRacing is more expensive, with a steeper learning curve, and because of that the rookie level is already a little bit more educated and respectful. But we can find the same pattern in both platforms. As the level of driving and experience rises, so does the level of racing. 
give enough time and growth to whatever you're racing and you will find better competitors and better racing. You'll definitely find people complaining about racing both Gran Turismo 7 and iRacing just because there are humans involved. This is simply the nature of the sport, especially when there aren't any bad consequences with crashes if you compare to real life, for example. Gran Turismo 7 will definitely have a much wider range of drivers, including beginners with controllers and a lot less experience. Because of that, Gran Turismo 7 will even ghost some drivers online when they move abruptly to crash someone else or if they are one lap behind, for example. You can call this unrealistic, but it's just a way to improve the experience to whoever is starting to play online and growing up at the ranking. Both Gran Turismo 7 and iRacing have two ways to measure and rank your skills in sportsmanship, the driver rating and the safety rating. The driver rating, or I rating in iRacing, is affected by the results of the races and will definitely help place you with the drivers of similar speed over time. The safety rating, as it's called in both platforms, is affected by the amount of incidents in online ranked races. So work on your safety rating if you want to join more serious lobbies. iRacing also has a protest system where you can report drivers with unsportsmanlike behaviors that could be worthy of warnings, suspensions and even permanent bans from the service. At the very top level of both safety rating and driver rating, you will quickly see that the racing level is actually similar in both platforms. As someone who started sim racing through racing games like Gran Turismo, Need for Speed and other console games during childhood, I understand the importance of these more arcadey games in introducing more and more people to the sport. You can stay in the arcades and have fun or you can try to improve as much as you can and drive competitively. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there, probably you, who started in Gran Turismo or other games and moved to iRacing. I'd say the other way around is not a very common move, although I'm doing it for research purposes, but it's still definitely possible. We've seen drivers like Marcel Kiefer, for example, moving from iRacing to Formula 1 game to become a well-known eSports competitor, for example. When it comes to competition difficulty, there is no better option. Any game or sim will have aliens, giving their life to beat the competition and become champions. You will definitely find challenge wherever you go. Of course, some games will not try to simulate absolutely everything, and other simulators will be more focused on details. For example, there's no such thing as ghosting in iRacing as there is in Gran Turismo 7. There is car damage in iRacing and not in Gran Turismo 7. You cannot drive into the pits at full speed in iRacing as you can in Gran Turismo. But these details won't really affect the competition level. The best drivers will adapt to every detail of the game or sim and will try to extract the best performance out of it. You will find some Gran Turismo 7 drivers absolutely slapping iRacing drivers and you will find some iRacing drivers absolutely slapping Gran Turismo 7 drivers. On the top level, you'll see it's quite similar. Drivers from both platforms already have moved on to race in real life after succeeding in sim racing, like Igor Fraga from Gran Turismo, Mikel Gade and Elvis Ranking from iRacing, or even me, who was invited to race in real life by a team called Apex V2R, which means Virtual to Reality, a team that focuses on highlighting the bridge between racing games, simulation and real life. You can become a better driver by paying attention to detail, to car response, and behavior based on your inputs and your knowledge of racing technique. Whether you're driving in Gran Turismo 7 or iRacing, focus on getting better and you will definitely get the most of whatever you're driving. By the way, you might be losing a lot of time if you're not applying these 5 tips that I talk about in this video. Since you stayed until the end of this video, I'm gonna give you a discount coupon to the Motor Racing Checklist, my online course that teaches so much more that you cannot even imagine. If this video inspired you to go practice more, subscribe to this channel and I will be posting a lot more videos with more technique tips in the next few days. See ya!